Before 1985, the statutory control over narcotic drugs was predominantly exercised under the Opium Act 1852, the Opium Act 1878, and the Dangerous Drugs Act 1930. The legal provisions of these enactments were found to be inadequate and lacking because of the passage of time and developments in the field of illicit drug traffic and drug abuse at the national and international levels. To consolidate and amend the law relating to narcotic drugs and to make stringent provisions for the control and regulation of operations relating to narcotic drugs and psychotropic substances, the Narcotic Drugs and Psychotropic Substances Act was passed by the Parliament in 1985. We Indians are celebrating our journey of 75 years of independence. And Sunset TV is playing a significant role by dedicating a series of episodes titled 75 Years, Laws That Shaped India. I'm your host, Hemant Batra, bringing to you another episode in that exclusive series. Today, we are going to talk about a comprehensive law on narcotic drugs and psychotropic substances which not only went on to consolidate and amend the outdated laws, but also made provisions for the implementation of international conventions, treaties, and protocols about narcotic drugs and psychotropic substances. Yes, we are discussing the Narcotic Drugs and Psychotropic Substances Act, 1985. In short, the NDPS Act. To talk about this groundbreaking legislation, we have with us a very knowledgeable expert panel. We are joined by Sanjay Kumar Singh, a very senior IPS officer. He's a Deputy Director General Operations at the NCB, that is Narcotics Control Bureau. He's also an awardee of the President's Police Medal for Meritorious Service. Welcome, Sanjay. Thank you very much. We are also joined by Neha Singhal, Senior Resident Fellow at Vidhi Center for Legal Policy. She has been researching on the criminalization of drug use in India and has authored the report titled From Addict to Convict, The Working of the NDPS Act in Punjab. Welcome, Neha. Welcome to the studios. So let's begin our discussion for today. Uh, Sanjay, let me start with you first. Right at the threshold, uh, you know, I want to ask you a very basic and fundamental question. What are narcotic drugs and psychotropic substances? What, what is the difference between these two terminologies? And also, if you want to flag any other important uh, definition or terminology from the definition clause of this act. Let us start with narcotic drugs. Uh, uh, as per the NDPS Act, uh, Narcotic drugs mean a coca leaf, cannabis, hemp, opium, poppy straw and includes all manufactured drugs, for example, charas, ganja, opium. Then we have a category of manufactured drugs. Mm -hmm. This include all coca derivatives, medicinal ca cannabis, mm -hmm. opium derivatives, poppy straw, concentrate and any other narcotic substances or preparation which are uh, which uh, the central government has declared uh, to be a manufactured drug by notification right. in the gadget. The, uh, some of the examples are heroin, cocaine, tramadol and fentanyl. I now, see. we come to psychotropic substances. Yeah. I am still not very clear about <laughs> what, is, what is the exact difference between say psychotropic substances and narco uh, narcotic Nothing. drugs and uh, manufactured drugs. Uh, for a layman, uh, uh, for a layman like me, you know, psychotropic uh, uh, substances mean any drug that affect behavior, thought, mood, or perception. It is a kind of umbrella term 
that may include different kind of drugs including prescription drugs and commonly misused drugs. Here I would like uh, uh, to, to uh, uh, say a bit about prescription drugs. What, what are prescription? We all know, mm -hmm. you know, there are certain drugs like antibiotics or uh, 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 fentanyl or uh, tramadol yeah. which you cannot buy or cannot take without uh, prescription, prescription from a of doctor. doctor. Of doctor yes. So, uh, uh, prescription drugs are included under uh, uh, psychotropic substances. Yeah. Now, we come uh, to the category of uh, control substances. Control substances are basically chemicals. They have dual purpose use. Some of the examples uh, are uh, acetic anhydride. Acetic anhydride uh, are, uh, is a solvent and is used to manufacture dye as well. Oh. But this can be used to manufacture uh, uh, heroin. Mm. So, uh, what uh, I mean, we have uh, 23 such chemicals which uh, the government of India have put under control category. Uh, and Sanjay, uh, sorry to interject you, you know I was glancing through the, the act uh, in, in the morning and, and I found that uh, there are overwhelming provisions uh, which prohibit persons from consumption, uh, usage, production, manufacturing, cultivation, transport, uh, possession, uh, sale purchase and so on and so forth with regard to these drugs and substances. Uh, the act is very detailed and lengthy, it goes into beyond 80 sections. Uh, can you please tell our viewers what is the regulatory and, and prohibitory uh, uh, mechanism uh, under the act with regard to these drugs and substances? This act is quite comprehensive. Right. Uh, this is one of these special acts of uh, central government, mm -hmm. which not, not only touches uh, upon the, the, the aspect of investigation, mm -hmm. it also touches upon the, the procedure of uh, investigation. Uh, and it also touches upon uh, the, the, the punishment the definition of the offense, everything. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in nutshell, uh, if I, uh, for uh, NDPS matter, for drug matters, this is, uh, uh, this act is IPC, CRPC and PMLA, Prevention of Money Laundering Act, combined into one, Put as together. far as drug matters are concerned. Correct. So, uh, this and uh, the provisions uh, for punishment under this act are uh, very, very uh, 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 draconian. Right. Uh, draconian. So, uh, uh, government of India, when uh, 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 it was passing uh, the act, they they uh, 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 try to make sure that uh, procedures mm -hmm. must be followed not only in letter but in spirit. As and well. courts over the years have been very, very strict uh, as far as uh, 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 implementation of the procedures while. Uh, doing uh, investigation of these cases as a concern. Under this act, we have even a uh, provision for uh, uh, capital punishment also right. in case of uh, in case of uh, 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 repeat offenders. Mm -hmm. And uh, for uh, um, uh, offenders, uh, for uh, offenses uh, in uh, commercial quantity, Correct. the 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 uh, uh, the uh, provision for punishment. Mm. is uh, more than 10 years, mm -hmm. in some cases as it is uh, 20 years, even for consumption mm -hmm. of uh, even for consumption of small quantity, mm -hmm. the punishment is uh, six to uh, six months to one year. Mm -hmm. But here also the onus mm -hmm. of proving that the, the, the possession of the mm -hmm. small quantity Hmm. is only for personal consumption and not for sale and distribution hmm. is on uh, 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 the, the offender. Oh, right. So, this, this act is uh, uh, and then uh, apart from if, apart from the, the, the offenders uh, who are involved in uh, um, hmm. uh, trading or uh, uh, um, uh, uh, possession hmm. or distribution, we have uh, provisions for uh, um, uh, people who are Financing, financing right. the uh, uh, the uh, drug trafficking, or even uh, uh, even in trading, mm. or uh, uh, mm. as in a better, 
or uh, if they are uh, party to the conspiracy, they can be booked right. under this uh, right. particular. Neha, uh, as uh, Sanjay ji was uh, hmm. mentioning, that this uh, the the punishment regime appears to be draconian. Uh, what would you like to say on on that aspect? What what does the the punishment regime look, look like, like under the act? NDPS has some of the most severe punishments in mm. all of the land of uh, of punishment in India. Yeah. Um, so, uh, what you had mentioned earlier, let me just read out all the things that are punishable. Mm. Production, manufacture, possession, sale, purchase, transport, import interstate, export interstate or use of narcotic drugs or psychotropic substances. In addition to this, embezzlement by a licensed uh, uh, like a illicit producer. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to this, cultivation of opium, uh, cannabis, etc. without a license. So, anything that you can imagine uh, mm -hmm. in the gamut of drugs and psychotropic substances uh, is covered under this law. Not just that, um, attempt to commit an offence criminal conspiracy to commit an offence as punishable with the same imprisonment as the offence itself. Right. Even preparation to commit an offence is uh, punishable under this act with half the penalty of the actual offence. Right. Death penalty for repeat offenders in case of uh, trafficking, in case of uh, illegal cultivation etc. Uh, death penalty in fact was, was a, we had mandatory death penalty until I think 2011 yeah. at which point Bombay High Court read it down to And then uh, after amendment, the, an amendment was made. Yes. Yeah. So now uh, we have discretionary death penalty for repeat offences. So, any possible punishment has been envisaged within this law. Um, I would like to, as an, I would like to say that um, no, we for even consumption, yes, and possession for personal use is punishable under this law with imprisonment hmm. for six months to a year. Right. But the onus no longer is on the offender actually. Uh, because the law has demarcated uh, punishment on the basis of quantities. Mm. So mm. now after 2001, mm. we have punishments on the basis of small quantity, intermediate quantity and commercial quantity. Right. So if you're carrying small quantity of drugs, you're presumed to be a user, which will mean that the law will uh, will think of you, say if you're carrying 50 grams of, cannab of, of marijuana, right. the law will assume that you're a user and punish you accordingly. You Correct. don't need to prove that you're a user. Right. So uh, that little leeway has been given in the law because prior to 2001 the biggest abuse that was happening under the law was against personal users right. where they were required to prove that they were users and not peddlers etc right. which is almost impossible to do in court because right. for that you will first have to admit that you had it right. no defender is going to admit that they had possession of a drug right. that's where they start rebutting Rebut so to Correct. admit that they had possession and that their possession was for personal use never played out in court so what ended up happening was most people were in jail for 10 years and above for personal consumption and that changed in 2001. Right, right. So, yes. Right. Thank you. Well, it is time to take a very short break. Please don't go anywhere as we are getting back soon. Welcome back after the break. You're watching our special show on some significant laws legislated during our journey of 75 years of independence. Today we are discussing a considerably important law, the NDPS Act 1985. The law, founding of which was more than imperative to address the problem of transit traffic of drugs coming mainly from some of our neighboring countries and destined largely for Western countries. Further, a stringent law was also needed to deal with coming into being of new kinds of drugs. There is a lot to discuss with our expert panelists, but let us first gather some understanding from the parliamentary discussion with regard to this law. The Narcotic Drugs and Psychotropic Substance Bill 1985 was introduced on 23rd August 1985 in the Lok Sabha by Minister of Finance and Commerce, VP Singh. 
the said bill was debated and passed in the Lok Sabha and the Rajya Sabha on 28th August 1985 and 29th August 1985 respectively. The bill then received the assent of the President of India on 16th September 1985 and came into effect on 14th November 1985 by way of notification in the Gazette of India. Let us view and hear some of the significant debates in the parliament on the said act. In my view, cultivation of charas is also as serious a crime as cultivation of opium and cannabis. So the provision of this bill should also be extended to growers of charas. I propose that there should be a provision for avoiding life imprisonment to those who are guilty of this. Even some of them should be awarded death penalty as is prevalent in some of the countries for such offences. Government has to take into consideration all the aspects. Sometimes some of the people without their knowing are addicted. Provision is made under clause 71 to the effect that we have to identify these addicts. For reintegration, for rehabilitation, for treatment, we have made provisions. So let us continue our remaining discussion. Neha, let me come to you now. Uh, you know, as Sanjay was also pointing out, you know, in uh, criminal jurisprudence, it is a well-established principle that stringent the law and harder, greater uh, is the benchmark uh, for investigating agencies and prosecution uh, as to the burden of proof. So can you share with our audience uh, some judicial precedents uh, where you feel that some of the sections, uh, provisions of this act were interpreted or elaborated by the courts of law? One is section 35, which presumes whatever intent or whatever any knowledge is required between section 35 and 54, the law presumes it. Basically, this law, what it has done is that it has said that possession of any substance is sufficient mm. to prove guilt. Yeah. How you came to possess it, etc. does not matter under this law. So now this became a source of judicial tug of war for a bit. So it started in 2002 with Madan Lal versus State of Himachal Pradesh, where the Supreme Court said that, uh, again, what Sanjay Ji had said earlier, that the, uh, the accused has to prove how he came to be in possession of a drug and that he otherwise possession is proved. Mm -hmm. Then later in 2011, there was a judgment called Bhola Singh versus State of Punjab, where the court said, the Supreme Court said that the prosecution has to prove that the accused had conscious possession of the drug, which means that the accused was aware that he had possession of a drug. So say if it's a lorry driver carrying opium, mm -hmm. he had to know that the substance in the lorry was opium. Correct. Prior to this, just ca driving a lorry would be sufficient. Right. This again changed in 2015 in Baldev Singh versus State of Haryana, where the Supreme Court went back to its original position and said just possession is sufficient. Oh. So this, uh, the reason why this is important is because but today, that was a that was a strict view. I mean, it wasn't a liberal view. No, so the liberal view happened for a very few years in the in the middle between 2011 to 14, I see. I see. where uh, the court and the reason that is is because the prosecution usually if the the temp their, the prosecution will go with template charge sheets where they will Correct. say that the person was found wandering with a certain amount of drug and then they f they qu stopped him, questioned him, and they found drugs on him. It was in response to these kind of template charge sheets that the court said that you know you need to prove conscious possession, but then that changed again. And today right. our state is. Just possession is Just sufficient. Is sufficient. Okay. So this is one thing which is very, which is core to me because I feel that this is uh, this is Absolutely. against our right of uh, you know presumption of innocence. And Correct. the other case that is of great value or that I think is important is a case called E. Michael Raj versus uh, Intelligence Officer Narcotics Control Bureau, where the court held that um, in determining the quantity of a drug. You can only look at the pure quantity of a substance. So mm -hmm. in this case, there were the accused was caught with six kilos of cocaine, mm -hmm. but the actual pure quantity of cocaine and that was only about sixty to seventy grams. The mm -hmm. rest of it was just, you know, uh, other substances. Other substances. So say if you have one kilo of substance and you have only ten grams of cocaine and ninety grams or, or whatever x grams of chalk powder, 
you can only be prosecuted for 10 grams for and not, yeah. the not the entire This was an important judgment in 2008. Correct. This again was overturned in 2017 by under Hiralal versus the Union of India, where now the law holds that the entire quantity is going to be considered and not just a pure substance. So if you're caught with a kg of powder with only 10 grams of cocaine, you will be convicted for, for, yeah, the whole for, the, for the whole kg. And this has come this to... This again is... Uh, it's extremely regressive. Extremely, extremely regressive. And absolutely. it has really had a, ma a massive impact, especially in Punjab. What I have studied is because people get uh, prosecuted there for pharmaceutical drugs. So like if I have a bottle of cough syrup, which, yeah. have some, which has some codeine in it, mm -hmm. I will be prosecuted for the entire 100 ml of that cough syrup and not just that point, whatever yeah. mg of codeine that is going to be. And this has led to a huge influx of prison yeah. population under pharmaceutical drugs. Taking on uh, from where Neha leaves, uh, Sanjay, uh, use of narcotic drugs and psychotropic substances for scientific and medicinal purposes is indispensable. And with these uh, judgments coming forth from, from, from the courts of law, uh, taking such a stringent view uh, as to possession, uh, what do you have to say? How, how does government regulate uh, you know, the production and usage of uh, these drugs and substances in context of scientific and medicinal purposes. Uh, I, I would like to inform uh, that uh, India uh, has been authorized uh, by uh, uh, UN under uh, UN conventions in, uh, uh, that was made in uh, 1961 to uh, uh, grow opium. And uh, we have been uh, issuing licenses, central government issues licenses to grow uh, opium uh, in uh, areas where it was being uh, grown traditionally. These areas are in uh, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh and Uttar Pradesh. Uttar Pradesh. The three states where uh, these, uh, these can be grown and licenses are being issued. Mm -hmm. uh, after, But it, it, the entire cultivation, its trade is regulated and controlled and it, it is controlled by, uh, uh, by an agency called uh, CBN. After uh, the, the, the crop is, uh, uh, is produced, uh, it, it, is, it is acquired by uh, CBN mm. and CBN uh, in its factories mm -hmm. uh, either dries it and sells it uh, to, to various companies which, uh, which uses opium for uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, making some uh, medical formulations. These factories uh, under uh, CBN they uh, uh, they manufacture uh, codeine, morphine, and uh, other such alkaloids, and these are uh, then uh, uh, sold to various uh, private uh, pharma companies for making uh, medicinal uh, 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 for uh, various pharmaceutical drugs. But we have problem of illicit cultivation of opium as well as cannabis. Cannabis, uh, 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 cultivation of cannabis is not at all legal anywhere in the country. Uh, opium is uh, legal, uh, uh, licenses are issued as I said, uh, but there is a problem of illicit cultivation of both opium and uh, 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 cannabis to, to stop and uh, uh, to curb the illicit cultivation in our country. Uh, NCB along with CBN, uh, mm -hmm. we collect uh, uh, satellite data of uh, areas uh, where illicit uh, cultivation is going on and uh, after collecting data through uh, from uh, agencies space agencies like adrin and uh, uh, bisec and we we share uh, uh, those data with, the with states states with yeah. states police and uh, uh, ncb and cbn okay. uh, from uh, uh, the center uh, we drive the destruction exercise in uh, these states uh, affected right. by illicit cultivation. Right. Uh, Neha, uh, uh, you know, this act has had its own set of uh, or share of criticism as mm -hmm. well. Uh, for instance, uh, you know, th th there doesn't seem to be any distinction between soft drugs and hard drugs. Mm. The punishment regime is by the and large same. same. Yes. And which I, I feel encourages criminals to lean more on, syn more on synthetic drugs for higher earnings. Uh, uh, now, in that context, my question is slightly different. Uh, do you think India should consider legitimizing soft drugs as many other countries have done? Uh, in recent times, Thailand has done, in US also many oh, states, yes, many states. Uh, have uh, soft drugs uh, uh, permissible policy. So what is your take on that? Mm. 
my take is a little more radical than that. I think all uh, consumption of all drugs should be uh, decriminalized. Mm. Um, whether it's a hard drug or a soft drug for the user, I don't think it, a person should be sent to jail for consuming whether cocaine or marijuana, it doesn't matter. So I would think that all kinds of drugs consumption should be decriminalized at least. Mm -hmm. But as a great starting point would be marijuana because um, like you said, uh, countries abroad are also yeah. making a move towards decriminalizing marijuana and India um, has never, it has the culture of marijuana use or its various derivatives has been uh, has been permissive mm. so i think we could start with marijuana decriminalization um, mm. also from my interactions with police officers i think they do find uh, going after marijuana users quite onerous so from all <laughs> points of view it will it be an be. easy it will be easy yeah. on the user and it'll also ease the burden on the system well it is time to take the viewers question the question is from dr shivani from lucknow let us listen in Bhang is commonly consumed in India in different forms, especially during the festival of Holi. But there is some confusion about the legitimacy of the consumption of Bhang. Is Bhang a prohibited drink or a prohibited drug as per the NDPS Act 1985? Sanjay, would you like to take this question? Oh, yes, very interesting question. Uh, very practical, uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, uh, in India, uh, 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 cannabis has been traditionally uh, been used uh, uh, as uh, uh, already told by my co-panelists. Uh, uh, cannabis has three forms. One is, uh, you know, uh, 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 drug is uh, extracted through its leaves. Okay. Uh, the other is through its resin. The third is uh, uh, from uh, flowering tops. Okay. So the first one uh, that is uh, through uh, leaves, 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 yes, is called bhang. Okay. And bhang uh, consumption or uh, trade uh, in bhang is uh, not uh, illegal in India. Many states have legalized uh, trading, even trading, not only consumption, even trading in uh, uh, bhang. So consumption uh, under, of bhang is legal. Is legal. We can, under, tell, uh, under, we can say yes, this authoritatively. Yes. yes. Okay. So okay. under uh, their uh, state excise act. Okay. But what is happening sometimes is uh, and uh, that in the name of bhang sometimes it is mixed with uh, uh, charas or uh, even with uh, uh, cannabis. Oh that is prohibited. Uh, so. Obviously. So. Uh, 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 that is illegal. So, yes. uh, uh, as per as per NDPS Act, mixing of bhang with any other drug is illegal. Mm. Uh, and again, for the purpose of production of bhang or trading in bhang, cultivation of cannabis is not allowed. So, you can extract bhang from uh, leaves uh, of cannabis that is wildly grown. Yes. Oh. So, so stray, you cannot stray plants. Yes, someone. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Someone not an cannot, organized farming. Yes, not an uh, as organized farming. Well, drug addiction has become one of the plagues of our times, a serious hazard which threatens public health and human behavior, whose consequences spread to crime and lawlessness. The challenges are ongoing, and so are the efforts to deal with them. On that note. Let me thank our guests. Thank you, Sanjay. Thank you, Neha, for joining us on this discussion and enlightening our viewers with your expert views. Thank you so much. Thank you. That's all we have in this edition of the program. You can also connect with us on various other social media platforms. Thank you for watching. Goodbye and Namaskar.